Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in this series on redesigning a mobile app. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at redesigning the transaction listing screen. This is basically the screen that has a list of all your transactions in a chronological order. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so this is how the transaction screen looks like. It's basically the second tab, and this is an old screenshot. Uh, right now, they have uh, another tab called as investments, and then they have profiles, so they've removed a lot of the things. So right now it would just be home, transactions, investments, and profile. So just making sure that uh, you guys know that this is an old screenshot, but the rest of the UI looks the same. Now, what we have here is basically a list of all the transactions in a chronological order. As you can see, September, 2023, they have 23 transactions, etc. cetera, right? Um, and then you have these things called as groups. Now I just called one of them as a test group. You know, I just called it a test group and added a few transactions. And I'm, we're, I'm gonna make a dedicated video on groups, uh, but we are going to look at groups to, to a smaller extent over here in this video because sort of transactions and groups are sort of connected with each other. But groups is basically a sort of a bucket uh, that you create for certain set of transactions. For example, let's say you have a business that you run and uh, you know you get some income and you make some expenses and you want to just categorize all expenses related to that business. Or let's say you went on a trip and you want to see how much you spent on the trip. So you only tag transactions that you spent when you were on that trip, right? So groups are used for very small use cases where you want to sort of categorize uh, transactions based on your needs. It's not about the you know, the specific categories such as earning or subscription or whatever it is, it's about your need, right? So that's the main purpose of groups. We're going to look into groups a little bit later in a different video, like I said, but for now, uh, this is just the basic idea, right? Now, one of the biggest problems on the screen is, th is the fact that from visually standpoint, there are too many colors, there are too many backgrounds, there's there's too many too much going on. And even the cards that you see over here, basically each transaction uh, list item isn't a scalable solution. I'm going to show you why this is a problem in another video, but for now, let's just assume that we're going to go ahead and redesign this because there are a lot of issues, right? So just keep that in mind. Now, another thing is uh, what happens when you tap on um, the test group. So when you select the second tab, what you get over here is basically a positive negative number of a transaction. These are just some transaction I just picked to create over here. So you get to see the total negative transactions or basically expenses of six transactions is this much. And there is one transaction, basically one an income, which is this, right? Um, and these are basically the list of transactions. When you tap on more, you end up seeing the exact same screen with the ability to search transactions, with the ability to add other transactions and filter for the time period. Now, doing this, repeating the same thing is basically adding absolutely no value whatsoever, right? So the first thing that we want to do is remove this duplication of the information on the screen, right? Now, of course, this is related to groups, but since this is a part of transactions, we have to still think about this a little bit. So the first most important problem that we have to fix is about what do we do with this? The main question we have to answer is, what do we show on this screen if we are going to have a dedicated screen that has all this information where you have the ability to add a transaction, where you have the ability to filter. Another weird thing that I've seen over here, and I've not seen this on any app in the world, is that when you come over here, the filter button gets disabled and so is the search bar. This is an extremely poor experience to be very honest. You can't hide or disable the search bar or you know the icon on the right side. I can challenge anybody watching this video to find another app that does it. You are not going to find it, right? So we're sort of solving problems that don't exist because we created new problems over here, right? What this basically means is now you're not able to search transactions within this test group. And so you have to come here to this other screen, which pretty much is the exact same screen. And here you can search transactions, right? Here you can search filter by the date and pick a specific time period, but here you can't, right? So removing that functionality over here and adding it over here in another screen, even though both the screens look, say, look the same, sort of doesn't make any sense whatsoever, right? So from a completely UX design and interaction design standpoint, this is completely broken and we really have to fix it, all right? The third tab you see over here is called groups. Now, technically from a hierarchical standpoint, you can't have groups at the same level as all transactions and test groups, right? And here you have the test group, which is pretty much the same as this tab, right? So first of all, visually, this looks completely weird. You have a lot of spacing issues. You've got this divider. You've got, you've got a bunch of random things going on and it is super hard to understand what is what. And test group sort of comes under groups, which is disconnected from transactions essentially, 
right? So if I have to repeat that, you have all transactions, that's fine. And then you have this feature called as groups where you have certain uh, types of groups under you know the main category of groups right and so groups cannot be a tab it doesn't make any sense you can't have test group and groups and all transactions as a tab makes absolutely no sense and over here you can see that the search bar is hidden i mean disabled and even the icon to filter is also disabled right so overall there are plenty of things that we need to fix over here because this is completely broken so what I started off by doing was just redesigning that screen with the design system that we had. So uh, here we had transactions and we had a search bar and we have all these three tabs. What I did was I went ahead and you know created all test group and groups. I just recreated that screen with the new visual language. I didn't solve any problems. I also made the search bar uh, you know, into an icon because maybe people don't search uh, for transactions often or maybe they do. This was just an exploration. And then I created another one over here where what I did was I decided that it, it, it does make sense that, you know, it is important to have the search bar right up front because users are most likely going to search transactions when they land over here. All right. Or they're probably going to look at the last 10 transactions that they made. Right. Then we have the filter icon that is always visible. I created this uh, folder icon, which is basically to represent groups. So I'm going to talk about groups again in a separate video. But basically the idea is when you tap on this icon, you get uh, the information that you see over here. You get the ability to create a new group. You get to see the existing groups that are there. And obviously you get to see archived groups as well, right? So rather than having it a tab, I added a touch point over here, which is going to trigger a new screen or a new linear flow, right? The search bar is always visible. That's great. And you know, ideally the search bar should always be tappable no matter what. You can never disable it. It makes no sense to disable it. And then here I added, just say two more groups. Let's say I put a Europe trip and then I added a, a business over here, right? Um, so here it makes sense. We have all transactions. Then here we have transactions for Europe trip. And then here we have transactions for business, which makes a lot more sense. Now, like I said, I'm going to make a separate video on explaining how I redesigned the listing and why I chose this design direction. Uh, but we're going to save that for another video. But for now, let's just focus on this. All right. Now, what happens when we tap on Europe trip, right? Because like I said, I don't want to have this duplication where we see the same screen being repeated and we disable all the information. We disable elements over here and we add the ability to add a search icon, right? I don't want to have this duplication. So the question is now, what do we show over here, right? So what I started off by doing was trying to come up with a concept that would sort of make this work, right? So what I did here was, first of all, I just started by redesigning the exact same thing with the design direction that I had, right? So I added uh, this, so incomes and expenses and added the net value and the list of transactions, all right, incomes and expenses. Now this was taking up too much of the screen space, so I decided to do another thing where I made it smaller, but this, you know, didn't look like a scalable solution and things were breaking. It didn't really look nice. I didn't even sort of polish this because I realized that this is not gonna look good. I tried another option over here where I added the net balance on top, but like I said, with this visual direction where you have too many surfaces and too many colors, it just makes the screen look super noisy. Uh, but I am keeping that constraint of having the surface colors and, um, you know, multiple surfaces, as you can see over here. Uh, this also didn't look that great, to be very honest. All right. And then finally, uh, over here where I, you know, removed the balances and then I just added this and I added separate list items, right? So if I want to see what are my only incomes, I can do that. And what are the only expenses for this particular group? I can do that, right? That feature isn't even available over here, right? So there is absolutely no way for me to see what are these six transactions. There is no way to see it. Right. Uh, this settings icon does something else. It, you know, it, it, it enables you to pin, it enables you to remove or rename or whatever it is. But, and as you can see here, it's only about filtering for the time period, right? There is no way for me to see what is this one single transaction or what are these six transactions? Of course, over here, it's a lot easier because there are only seven transactions, but if you have 50 transactions, how do you find transactions that belong to the expenses and how do you find transaction or just basically filter for those transactions, right? That is something that is super important to have, right? That is the whole point of creating a group, right? It's not just about having the net figure. It is about looking at the transactions for the expenses and the incomes for that particular group. And that is completely missing, right? How can that be missed? I really don't know. But anyway, right? So we come back over here and I, 
I realized I, I designed this and I felt like, you know, we have too many boxes, we have too many numbers and, you know, it's not really a great experience whatsoever, right? So what I decided was that I would remove this entire concept of having this balances and showing the income and expenses over here and all the ability to add a transaction, to search for something else specific, all of that and even having the ability to sort and filter between incomes and expenses, right? So if I click on, if I want to see the incomes, I should be able to see the incomes. And if I want to see the expenses, I should be able to see all the expenses, right? I don't want to see all of them together. Of course, I can see all of them together, but I should be able to quickly filter it, right? So having that much granular control, I decided to have it, you know, under this uh, groups section where you would then see your op trip and you would have a dedicated screen to do whatever you want, right? And I'm going to show you that screen in a different video about groups but for now for this particular screen of redesigning the transactions I removed this entire thing altogether right so if we were to look at the final design of the transactions this is how it would look right so if I just open this back and we can do a uh, before and after uh, comparison here we can filter by the categories we can filter by time period we can filter by a bunch of things and I'm going to make a dedicated video showing the filter screen as well then we have this uh, icon which is basically the groups you go to the groups and you can see a list of all your groups uh, you have the search bar which is always active we have all this information over here which is chronologically ordered and then you have all transactions and then you have the europe trip as well and when you tap on europe trip what you see is just the transactions the same way they look over here just filtered for your op trip right i don't have a screen for it but basically it's the exact same screen without any other information such as incomes and expenses and net total balance and all of those things it's just going to look like this now, one of the things to pay attention to over here is that all these transactions are categorized at a monthly level. So for September 2023, we have all these transactions. But what I've done here is I've broken that down at a date level. So first we show 30th November, then we show 29th November and then 28th November. Now, which is the right design decision, right? Should we have it at a monthly level or should we have it at a date level, right? This is a design decision that we have to make. Now, if you apply just common sense, it makes sense to separate all the items based on a date, right? Because you, when you're looking for a specific transaction or when you're looking for a specific date, right? Let's say you made an expense on 25th of, uh, you know, November, right? Finding that 25th November over here by looking at this data point over here is a little bit, you know, it takes a little bit of effort for the human, right? But when you have separate sections over here, uh, which is easily split by the dates, it becomes a lot easier. You can quickly scan for a specific date. So the moment you keep scrolling, you can search, okay, 25th November, and then you can look at the transactions. Now, another thing that you can do is also look at competitive analysis and look at how other apps do it. So here, um, if you see on Mobin, I've just filtered for timeline and history and finance apps, and you can see that everywhere we have a list of transactions, right? So as you can see, here this is your balance this is all your transactions it is split at a day level all right uh, and if you see over here this is chase bank 22nd august 21st august right this is the standard pattern and the standard benchmark right let's look at another one right this is monzo as you can see here it says today here it says tuesday thursday tuesday whatever right let's look at um, other apps n26 right uh, it's also a neo bank so you have yesterday you have tuesday you have sunday right so all of these are categorized at a day level and not really at a month level right uh, and the main reason is because it should be easy to find a specific date that you're looking for right um here's another one right so for today these are all your transactions for march 8th these are all the transactions right um what else let's let's try to find a few more um, this is well simple, Klarna, we don't see Neo Financial, um, right? So here Neo Financial, for some reason, they've gone ahead and done it at a month level, but so this is, seems to be an exception, all right? Most of the apps are doing it at a day level. Um, here, Wise as well, here also they're doing it at a monthly level. Uh, let's look at other apps here. Um, this is Revolut. So here again, this is at a uh, day level. So, you know, for today, that's all your transactions. Um, all right, we just saw Wise, whatever. Here we have Coinbase. Coinbase is a little bit different, of course. So let's not compare that. Um, right, so as you can see, most of the apps, they are doing it at a day level and not at a monthly level. Uh, this is Copilot, which is a tracking app. This doesn't really have your transactions. Um, let's see, maybe actually we can look at Copilot. And as you can see, yeah, Copilot also does it at a day level. So today, yesterday, August 23rd, 
August 20th, whatever it is, right? So that much information is enough to realize that we need to have the breakup at a day level rather than a monthly level, right? And I removed the, the number of transactions. Don't really know if that's needed or not. Uh, I don't know how much uh, info, how much useful that information is. And there is also no total as well because here you have a positive and negative. So it doesn't make sense to show the total here. We just want the list of uh, transactions, right? So I hope that makes a lot of sense. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.